Joining us now as we take a look at this worrying concern is Professor Simon Itwange. He's agricultural processing and storage expert at the Federal University of Agriculture in Marco de Benue State. Thank you for joining us on Newsnight. And you come from the food basket of Nigeria. I wonder how much of these pesticides are used in you know, uh, places like um, Marco de but really, how do these chemicals make their way to Nigeria? Is it that the gatekeepers, I mean, they mentioned NAFTA there, is it that they're not doing their job? Or that the people who actually import these harmful chemicals, as much as $300 million uh, every year, yeah. how, are they even aware that these chemicals are really dangerous and not uh, you know, good for human consumption? Actually, these chemicals are at the beginning when they became available for agriculture in Nigeria around 1962, uh, they were very, very useful uh, as a food security strategy, mm -hmm. especially with uh, regards to monocropping and the fact that we needed to put more land under uh, production. Uh, the traditional systems of weed control uh, could not meet up with the increasing expanse of land. So they became very useful at the time. But as you know, some of these chemicals, the impacts are not uh, seen immediately, especially on our health and on the environment. It's a long time uh, down the road before you begin to feel the impact of the chemicals. And so many years of um, using these chemicals in our agriculture, science is now beginning to find that there are very, very serious issues with these chemicals in terms of the impact on our health, in terms of the impact on the environment, and uh, in terms of uh, the impact on biodiversity generally. So this is why uh, today we are saying, let us take a second look because scientific evidence has shown that they are deleterious to our health and debilitating to the environment and we need to look at alternatives that are much safer so that we are able to provide for food security and at the same time guarantee food safety because honestly we can ask ourselves the food we eat are we really eating food or we are eating poison Oh, no. Because whether we like it or not, these active ingredients in these chemicals find their way into the food. And based on the knowledge of basic science uh, in our secondary school uh, biology, mm. uh, you can now understand why uh, countries begin to talk about the residue of the chemical yes. in the food. So if it is not entering into the food, then you will not be talking about its residue in the food. Interesting. Right. You are a storage expert. Uh, have you been able to identify if perhaps lack of proper storage infrastructure in the value chain is a driver for these chemical applications? Basically, at the level of uh, storage and, of course, if we are being uh, in grains markets across mm -hmm. Nigeria, mm -hmm. you will be shocked at the level of use of these chemicals in, in storage. Uh, they use uh, all kinds of chemicals, sniper, uh, in ensuring uh, that they store these products. And unfortunately, you know, these chemicals have uh, a, what they call in chemistry half-life. Mm. If you use them, they are most, there's a, a, a minimum period of time to allow the effect of that chemical to die off, to wear off, before you take the uh, the food into the market. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, you'll find that because of pressure of the economy, uh, they spray the chemical today, and then uh, something happens, somebody gets sick, and the farmer will need to take the person to the hospital, mm. and the only thing he has is to sell that beans that he, oh. he sprayed with chemical just a few days ago. And it gets into the market, perhaps maybe you have had, or families, eating families. beans yes. Yes. Uh, with mm -hmm. meal and mm -hmm. uh, all of them sleeping yeah. and not waking up. So these are the issues and it, it goes all across 
the value chain. So we're not just talking about the level of production. Mm. It goes into processing, into storage, and all across the value chain. Mm. The level of chemicals that are used in our agriculture, it's a public health emergency. In, indeed. Uh, very quickly, before we wrap, uh, I, I mean, looking through uh, this document, one has identified uh, some really bad uh, you know, of uh, chemicals. Glyphosate, uh, we here accounted for 67.4% by weight and 53.4% by volume. And so many others. I mean, there's uh, pendimethaline, you know, uh, tongue twisting names. But very quickly, let's talk about these alternatives. I see neem oil. I actually have a neem tree in my compound, uh, the one we know as Dogon Yaro. Mm. You know, it's, it's about this height now. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the alternatives and more importantly how do these farmers or the importers how do they you know uh, how available are these alternatives very quickly yeah the alternatives are available you talked about the name which is um, everywhere in nigeria mm. and it, it it deals with uh, calosobrucus maculatus in terms of the what's, what's that that's a cowpea weevil oh, okay. <laughs> okay so mm -hmm. in fact we normally tell farm uh, uh, consumers if you go to buy beans and you don't see insect the weevil, weevil that just just stay clear just stay clear right. because um, Whatever made the weevil to disappear will make you <laughs> as a human being to also disappear. Now, these alternatives are out there. They are mm. available. What mm. we are doing at the Alliance for uh, on Action uh, for Pesticides is that we are putting together all these alternatives. Right. Because when we educate the farmers on you know, the demand reduction strategy, we tell them don't ask for these chemicals, don't buy. They tell us, they ask us, what, where are the alternatives? Mm -hmm. So we are documenting all the alternatives uh, so that we can tell them, look, there are very many alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, to can governments ban these chemicals from coming into the country? Yes, uh, they right. have banned okay. some of them, but uh, they still find their way in. Right. in. Right. So it does look like a whole mix of yeah. regulatory and awareness mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Professor Simon Itwange. Yes. Thank you so much. He's an agricultural processing and storage expert at the Federal University of Agriculture in Makadi, Benway State. Thank you.